This is RNN, the regional news network. Hello, I am Richard French, and welcome to this RFL special presentation, The Battle Over Bridge Safety, Five Years and Counting. You know, for many people of all different faiths and differing beliefs, this is a very special time of year. And while we have seen a year filled with a cheer of acrimony and for far too many struggles, for most of us, the holiday season, it is an opportunity to get together with family and to count our blessings. But sadly, these occasions, they can also be a cruel reminder this year or in years past that there is an empty seat at the table. In far too many cases, that empty seat is a result of the loss of a loved one who decided to take their own life. Now, while all suicide is tragic, the all too common story of individuals leaping to their deaths from area bridges, it struck us as not as inevitable as others believed. It is an issue that we've been working on for some time now. It's hard to believe it was five years ago, just about this time of year, that we first tackled the subject on this broadcast that it seemed no one really wanted to talk about. At the beginning of our investigation, we were met with both resignation and in some cases, even resistance from authorities. But the grief and the grace of the families left behind encouraged us to continue. Now, for some of those families, there was a sense of loss and even perhaps a certain feeling of shame. But tonight, you will see how many turn sadness and shame into action that has certainly saved others. For many mental health professionals and suicide prevention experts, there was a sense of helplessness. Could they have talked someone out of taking a fatal plunge if just given the opportunity? Well, tonight, you will find out the answer is a resounding yes. For some public officials, as I mentioned, there was a stone wall of denial and a deafening silence when demands were made that more could and should be done to save lives on the bridges that they controlled. Well, tonight, you will see how RFL and you, the viewer, helped make a difference, change policy, and most importantly, saved lives. Over the next hour, you will also see that this is a story that has a definite beginning. The suicide, seemingly without remedy, and a bridge authority initially refusing to even entertain, let alone answer our questions. But it's also a story that has a significant and even uplifting middle as the bridge authority and then the throughway authority gave in to our ongoing coverage and the outrage of our viewers, all in the end installing suicide prevention hotlines and even barriers on some Hudson River crossings. Unfortunately, though, it's also a story that as yet another year comes to a close still has no end. And that's all because, as you will also learn, still more, much more can and should be done because the death toll, despite some concrete action, still continues to mount with disturbing frequency. Regina Orsania is just one of many reporters who spent hours looking into the issue from every possible angle. And tonight, we will begin at the beginning. Our reporters started banging on doors, and more often than not, those doors were slammed in their faces. When traditional reporting went nowhere, we tried ambushing officials, but still they didn't want to listen, let alone respond. But then we uncovered some compelling evidence that call boxes weren't just a theory, but were in fact saving lives on one bridge in particular in New York's Hudson Valley region. While not far away, suicides far more frequent on another bridge that didn't have those call boxes. So we used that to start forcing those in power to wake up. Our Regina Orsania picks up the story going all the way back to 2006. Back in December of 2006, two people jumped to their death off the Kingston Rhinecliff Bridge in New York's Hudson Valley. At the time, many in the mental health profession called the bridge a target for those with a certain MO for suicide. Its location is isolated, the drop is significant, and there were no signs offering help. They stop their car and they just jump over the side. Uh, whether, whether phones installed there uh, would be used is, is un, undeterminable at this point because there are no 
phones. At the same time, further downriver, the Mid-Hudson Bridge was being called a model for safety and suicide prevention. That span was transformed in the mid-1980s, adding barriers to the walkways and call boxes offering potential jumpers, assistance, and a way out. Back then, Dr. Kenneth Glad, who is still the Dutchess County Commissioner of Mental Hygiene today, told us of the dozens of people who used the call boxes on the bridge over the years, only two jumped. Many called for similar barriers and phones to be installed on the Kingston Rhinecliff Bridge. As far as lowering suicide rates by people jumping from bridges, a, a barrier would be one way to help. It's worth the minimal investment of signs and radio transmitters with cell technology. I mean, there are 24-hour services in, in the Kingston area. At least one firefighter who has spent time searching for suicide victims believes a change is necessary. I was very surprised when they redid the bridge that they, that they did keep it low, as low as they did. Um, I had questioned that to, to somebody and they said they were kind of doing that for a, um, a scenery type thing so it wouldn't block the scenery. Uh, I, myself, I feel that a higher fence would definitely, um, we definitely wouldn't have lost these two people, I don't think. The Kingston Rhinecliff Bridge was no stranger to suicide. Despite RNN's numerous attempts at the time, state officials were either unable or unwilling to provide a total number of jumps since the bridge's construction. Back then, the bridge authority refused to comment on camera, but later released this statement to RNN, saying, quote, the authority recognizes that it has a public and moral responsibility to address the issue of suicide prevention. While safety issues are an ongoing concern of the authority, several weeks ago we began an intensive study of what, as a public agency, we can do to aid in the prevention of suicides. It appears that over time, the people at the Bridge Authority, they got the message. Call boxes were installed on the remaining four bridges in the Upper Hudson Valley. Today, the Bear Mountain Bridge, Kingston Rhinecliff Bridge, Rip Van Winkle Bridge, and the Newburgh Beacon Bridge all have suicide prevention hotlines. Do they work? Well, here's this. At least a half a dozen people used the call boxes in just the first few months after that report originally aired. All of them were literally talked off the edge. Now, from 2006 to 2007, here is a strange twist in this ongoing story. Imagine our surprise when the bridge authority, including some of the very same folks who consider us nothing less than a nuisance, did a complete about face and gave us an award for our coverage. The ceremony took place at the Bear Mountain Bridge. The press can oftentimes be perceived as a nuisance. And while we can differ on any given day on the tone and right time to talk about subjects, the press correctly uh, does not allow us that luxury. WRNN played an important role in highlighting this issue. I credit WRNN and Richard French in particular for giving light to this very dark issue and spreading the word to others that there are things that can be done and there is hope for those suffering from depression. Since this program was implemented in the spring, three lives have already been saved due to this successful effort. I am pleased to tell you that our combined efforts have already resulted in other authorities and agencies taking steps to implement similar programs. The Bridge Authority has developed a roadmap, and it has demonstrated that it can be implemented. Already, the Thruway Authority has implemented the Lifeline program at the Tappan Zee Bridge. It did so in August. And while suicide prevention is a major public health challenge, it needs to occur on a human-to-human -human basis. Richard French III and his co-workers from RNN-TV probably hoped, but had little idea of the real-life impact their series on suicide would make. By putting a human face to a news story about a jumper off a bridge, Richard and RNN TV showed the region that there is an individual behind the soundbite, a life and a story behind the news clip. The Mid-Hudson Bridge, more than 23 years ago, installed a pilot program, and the idea was if it worked, it would be on all the bridges. They found out that in an over 20-year period, there was almost a 50% decrease in deaths. So we started asking more. We met with, with all due respect, the real heroes, people not just in law enforcement, literally save people right there, but also people on the other end of the lines. We spoke to mental health professionals 
who literally talked the person off the edge of a bridge. And with all due respect, I, I can't thank you enough for this honor, but as much attention as we brought, those people do that, and they told me that this works. So we said, why not everywhere? And for a variety of reasons, and through a lot of headaches along the way, we never got a compelling answer. It was right there. 20 years, the promise was if this worked, it should be everywhere. It is, or is getting there, I should say. And so the story certainly could have ended there, but it didn't. When we come back, we're going to take the battle of bridge safety into another year against another authority and another bridge. The Tappan Zee, it spans the Hudson River and has been called a suicide magnet by mental health professionals. We'll see how the TAP's approach to suicide prevention literally was woefully misguided. And later... This whole suicide thing is more devastating than my mother's murder. Because my mother didn't want to be murdered. And the fact that my sister killed herself, it's just ten times worse. We'll meet the sister of one suicide victim who offers proof that suicide knows no bounds when it comes to sex, race, or class of its victims. It is a tragic story of a newspaper heiress who ended her life with a leap in the middle of the Tappan Zee Bridge.